Legend has it that the Warlock class used to rule Arena. It's been a while since we've seen one, but is that about to change? Today, we're going to be predicting the meta for the newest patch. We consulted with some Galaxy Brain Pro players to give us their predictions on how the meta will shape up. So, place your bets now to see whether Warlocks will be a total success or a Jurassic failure. But before we get into it, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Every patch, we work hard to update you all on important changes, and as a subscriber, you will get instant access to all of our releases. All it takes is one click, and it helps both of us out. Let's kick things off by looking at the absolute best of the best for 915. It really should come as no surprise that Fire Mage is holding onto its throne as one of the gods of ranged DPS. Despite a nerf to Triune Ward in the recent patch, Fire Mages continue to dominate the latter, especially as RMP, which ironically was buffed indirectly due to a nerf to Fleshcraft. With RMP still holding strong as one of the best comps in the game, Fire Mages have a strong hold over Arena. But even in other comps, Fire continues to be meta-defining. Although God Comp and RMD aren't nearly as popular, they are still threatening to many mid-tier classes. Joining Fire Mage in the S-tier are Shadow Priests. Although Shadow has been an incredibly strong spec for the entire expansion, it wasn't until 9.1 that they truly became gods. In the recent meta, Shadow Priests have shifted away from Venthyr in favor of Necrolord, which offers significantly more bulkiness combined with a relatively easy kill setup. With the ability to summon a Skeleton Wizard, Kevin's Oozling, Psy Fiend, and Shadow Fiend, Necrolord Shadow Priests become a pseudo-pet class during kill attempts. This has allowed them to navigate the melee dominant meta, as getting off damage is much easier as Necrolord since you aren't tied to casting mind games for kills. And speaking of never having to cast, BM Hunters form a triad of dominance in our ranged DPS update. Bestial Wrath took a minor nerf in the patch, but it is hardly noticeable since their damage is still overtuned in a comp like Jungle Cleave. This nerf came with two buffs to pet management, as Revive Pet had a cast time reduction and Mend Pet can no longer be dispelled. The relative strength of jungle in 3s is matched by the strength of BM in 2v2, where it continues to do really well with Resto Druids. It is unlikely we will see BM fall off from its throne unless there are drastic changes. Moving down to the A tier, we have some more hybrid representation. Elemental Shaman continues to do well in Season 2, and although not nearly as prolific as our top tiers, it is still competitive at a high level. One difficulty facing shamans this patch is the nerf to Fleshcraft, which gave Elemental much needed bulkiness against RMP in the opener. After its nerf, shamans might have some survivability issues, and although Covenant switching is much easier, we highly doubt they will be moving away from Necrolord anytime soon. Balanced Druid rounds out our A tier, and just like Elemental, it won't be seeing any movement up or down our tier list this patch. Ironically, Balance has been a spec facing an identity crisis all expansion. From one-shot Convoke builds early in Season 1, to more setup-based playstyles with Kyrian in Season 2, Balance has had a massive spectrum of playstyles so far. One of its biggest difficulties is that the spec is limited to a 1 minute CD on its goes with Root Beam. Even though a 1 minute go might not seem like a big deal, a comp like RMP is able to perform 3 kill setups in the same time period. So despite having really high consistent damage combined with one of the most threatening offensive cooldowns, Balance might be a bit too slow to really dominate in 915. But with Ellie Shamans and Balance Druids holding the high ground on the A tier, some new challengers approach. Are you ready for what they bring? You will be if you subscribe to skillcap.com slash wow. With season two coming to a close, time is running out before you can reap those sweet rating rewards. Luckily for you, we have the biggest collection of class guides and arena commentaries on the entire planet. For over a decade, Skillcapped has been producing the highest quality instructional content, and for $4.99 a month, you can join over half a million lifetime users who have seen rating gains from our site. You don't believe us? No worries. We offer a money back guarantee if you don't see the rating gains you were expecting. So if you want to start your PvP journey today, check out skillcap.com. Before going down to the B tier, we have to make a quick stop and cover some specs that might be pretty good this patch. Frost Mage had some glimpses of hope in 9.1 with some key damage buffs, and now in 915, the buffs continue with Icy Veins no longer being dispellable. This might seem like a big deal, but unfortunately, it doesn't really matter since Frost Mages should be playing with Ice Form anyway. The biggest thing limiting Frost and Arcane for the past few patches is that they don't nearly offer the same tools as Fire, which has better CC, better defenses, and one of the best offensive cooldowns in the game. It's possible we might see more Frost Mage Wizard Cleaves this patch. While its toolkit isn't really suited for melee caster, it does work well in double caster setups since it is so good at zoning enemy players with snares. And if there's one partner Frost Mages might be looking for, it's Warlocks. 
Overall, every Warlock spec seems to have the same power with some very unique weaknesses. Demonology has looked increasingly promising, especially now with a cast time reduction on Decimating Bolt and the Shard of Annihilation buff no longer being dispellable. This comes with one problem facing Warlocks as a whole, and that they require too much ramp up time. With the meta shifting towards instant early game setups, having a Warlock on your team puts you at a huge disadvantage early on, since it takes them a few seconds to build resources. Affliction and Destruction saw a key buff this patch, with Dark Soul no longer being dispellable. This helps with some of their offensive problems, but a bigger problem remains on defense, where they are often too easy to shut down due to their limited mobility. This has forced Warlocks to play Night Fae all expansion, and with mobility creeping up across the board for all specs, Warlocks seem to be left behind. Finally, we have one of the most promising stories of Season 2, with Mark's Hunters jumping all the way up from C to B plus since our last update. The specs saw some key damage buffs in the patch on top of a class-wide cast time reduction on Revive Pet and Mend Pet no longer being dispellable. Marks might actually be Sleeper OP this patch, and its burst damage is no joke. With cooldown stacking, Marks Hunter damage skyrockets, and it's not uncommon to see one second kills with all CDs popped. Some people claim that it lacks consistent damage, but this doesn't really seem to be the case, as they are able to deal high throughput the entire game. Will Marks overtake BM as the dominant ranged hunter spec? We don't think so, but will it become a new option in Jungle Cleave and open up more tier 1 hunter comps? That might just happen. Okay, if you've been keeping track, you know that we only have one final spec left to cover, and making its way up from the C tier this patch is Arcane Mage. Just like Frost, Arcane's main weakness is that it's simply not fire. But really, Arcane only has one spell school for damage and for the majority of its control. In a meta where RMP and aggressive melee cleaves reign supreme, having limited spell casts is a massive liability. Despite Arcane power no longer being dispellable, Arcane will likely face the same issues as it has for a few years now. While it does have one of the hardest hitting abilities in the game, it is often more of a one trick pony rather than jack of all trades like its fire mage Big Brother. And in a meta where kill windows are increasingly smaller, landing a hard casted spell for your setup is about as likely as a WoW dev mentioning the word PvP. Overall, there really hasn't been much movement in the high tiers. The three gods of ranged DPS seem to be here to stay, which is being mirrored in our melee tier list updates. We do expect to see some meta shifts in the mid tiers now, as Frost Mage damage combined with some key Warlock buffs might help elevate those specs to a better position compared to last patch. The biggest question mark we have is the strength of Mark's Hunters. They seem to have the raw damage needed to compete at higher ratings, and their burst is absolutely insane. Will this be enough to disrupt the BM Hunter meta? We will have to see. Until then, we hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe because we will be unveiling our final tier list update for healers very soon and you don't want to miss it. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop for increasing your rating this season, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow, where our team of pro players is working hard to get you ready for the end of season two. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.